I chose a nudist resort as the place to celebrate my 31st birthday because I knew it was the only way to take my mind off drinking. This would be my first birthday sober in over 12 years. Armed with a whole two weeks of sobriety, it seemed the only way to distract my obsession with alcohol would be to surround myself with the exposed genitals of strangers. <laughs> yeah, that's how loud the cravings were. I was living in Ocean Beach, where the streets seemed to emanate the smell of stale beer, dog pee, and weed. Uh, not the best environment for a newly realized recovering alcoholic, and I needed to get away. So I impulsively booked a night at a nude resort and curated the perfect newly sober road trip playlist, mostly angry and empowering female ballads intermingled with songs about how fucked up I was, and took off up the 15 toward Palm Springs. I had no idea what to expect. I was forewarned by a few online reviews about inadvertently checking myself into a swingers resort, but the one I had settled on, the now closed Living Waters Spa, seemed to fit the bill. To distract myself from the anxiety of what lay ahead, those early days were a constant quest to find louder and louder noises to drown out the buzzing in my brain, I spent the two and a half hour drive belting out Alanis Morissette and smoking a steady stream of clove cigarettes. When I finally arrived at the resort, I was taken aback at how small and unassuming it was and took note of how high the walls were. <laughs> it was a khaki-colored fortress of nudity, and I was about to enter as a willing participant. I grabbed my luggage, not much more than a purse, it was two days of being naked after all, and <laughs> knocked on the front gate. I was greeted by a woman close to 70 years old, wrapped in a tie-dye sarong, who introduced herself as Judy. I knew from the website that she and her husband, Jeff, owned the spa. I was just four steps inside and the heavy door closed and locked behind us. Now fully protected from the outside world, Judy wasted no time shutting the sarong. It happened so fast, I wondered if it was ever even there to begin with. <laughs> There I was, staring directly into her butt crack as she, <laughs> as she sashayed down the walkway to the office. That's when the panic started to set in. <laughs> and I wondered how long it would take me to be found out as a nudist newbie, or worse, a voyeur, or peeping Tom. This was all becoming too real. The walls from the inside suddenly felt very high. Judy brought me to the small office and sat across from me. Everything was business as usual. It was a run-of-the-mill hotel office, sparsely decorated with a desk, computer, not much else. She continued talking to me like a normal check-in person would, as if her breasts were not hanging to her belly button and staring me directly in the eyes. <laughs> I shifted uncomfortably in my seat and tried to focus on her words, but my brain was screaming, am I in a cult? <laughs> she reviewed the rules with me. Always carry a small towel to sit on in common areas, including the breakfast area and pool. Breakfast area? <laughs> I couldn't believe that the nudity extended beyond the pool and into this office, much less into the sacred space of coffee, juice, and do-it-yourself Belgian waffles. <laughs> no cameras were allowed at the pool, and I was issued a sticker to place over my cell phone camera. I was starting to wonder what exactly she thought I was here to do. <laughs> Judy and her breasts gave me the grand tour. <laughs> there were about 10 rooms, all surrounding the large, hot spring-fed pool. As I was escorted to my room and shown around the property, I noticed just two other guests, a man and a woman. He was sunbathing, and she was floating on a blow-up raft in the pool, arms splayed out, breasts and pubic hair, and freckles and dimples for the entire world to see. I quickly averted my gaze and hastily unlocked my own room. Once inside, I flopped down on the bed. Could I really do this? Just be naked? Just bear everything? What if they saw right through me? Or worse, what if they just saw me? I opened my bag. I had foolishly packed a couple of pool cover-ups and sundresses to wear around, but now I knew there was no around here. Uh, no delineation between nude and clothed. We were all just bearing it all, all the time. I stripped down to nothing but a sun hat and faced myself in the mirror. I snapped a few nudes for the man I met two days earlier, <laughs> who would later become my husband and father of my child. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, I was sober, but I had a reputation to uphold. Okay? <laughs> I was tan, mercifully, but I was bigger than I had been a couple of years before, before my divorce and before alcohol bloated my body. I had curves and rolls and a light layering of fat over my belly, to which I was growing accustomed, though not fond. I flexed my abs and remembered my mother's constant nagging to stand up straight, and I obeyed. My mind drifted to a year and a half earlier when I had wandered into my first AA meeting. It was the 5.30 p.m. evening serenity meeting in Ocean Beach. I felt the same insecurity and fear of being found out while I was sitting in the back of that room, too. I felt like an interloper and the walls in that room felt pretty damn high. I was emotionally naked and I couldn't wait for the meeting to end so I could just recloak myself in my cozy snuggie of denial. The anxiety must have shown on my face because on the way out, a man approached me with a rose, which he said he brought to every meeting and gave to the one person who looked like they needed it the most. I remember thinking, did I just win the award for the saddest person in an AA meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I left that meeting convincing myself that I did not belong there, kept layering on the denial and drinking for another 18 months. Now here I was flexing naked at myself in the mirror, feeling all sorts of insecure and panicky and thinking about how just one little drink would take the edge off. When a voice suddenly broke through, fake it till you make it. Just find a way to keep yourself upright until your legs find the strength. There was no reason I couldn't just strut out there and act like I was raised in a nudist colony. <laughs> Nobody would be any the wiser. I didn't know it then, but this fake it till you make it mentality would serve me well in the early days of sobriety. Just keep pressing on and don't let anyone treat you like you don't belong here or aren't deserving, including yourself. I took a deep breath and headed out to the pool. With an average daily high of 108 degrees, the July weather in Palm Springs can be oppressive. <laughs> but I was surprised to notice how divine the velvety hot air felt on my completely bare skin. I picked a lounge chair, laid down my obligatory tiny towel, <laughs> and headed toward the water, the only available way to cover my body. It was the absolute perfect temperature, and as I slid into it, I was again surprised, this time by the joy of feeling cool water on every surface of my body. I had skinny dipped before, sure, but only drunk. This was something else. My body tingled with the endorphins of adventure, and mixed with the cool of the water dancing on every skin cell, I immediately felt a kind of refreshed I'd never felt before. Any doubts or worries were absorbed by the water. I waded the pool from end to end. Ecstasy rippled from my heart, outward and down, pooling in my fingers and toes. Around sunset, I decided to head to Trader Joe's to buy myself a birthday cake. Just a few hours into my first nudist experience, clothing already felt restrictive and unnecessary. <laughs> I shopped quickly, grabbing myself a chocolate cake, and then headed back to my room. Once there, I surprised myself by immediately stripping fully naked. I sat on the bed and ate half the cake completely in the nude. I caught a side glimpse of myself in the mirror and smiled. For the first time in years, I felt completely free of my clothing, of my insecurities, of the weight of addiction and the horse of shame it rode in on. The next morning, thanks to being hangover free, I awoke before the sun and watched it rise completely naked from the poolside. Nobody else was awake yet, so it was just me, the warm morning air, and a gorgeous view of the little San Bernardino Mountains behind the resort. I attended the breakfast with my tiny towel and surprised myself. Turns out, eating yogurt and granola next to a fully nude man is not as weird as you would think it would be. <laughs> I even smiled at someone and looked into their eyes. <laughs> I realized that an agreement of sorts hung in the air here. We're all being vulnerable. While I had expected this trip to be just horrifying and exciting enough to drown out my drinking obsession the way only such an extreme endeavor can, I was pleasantly surprised to actually find some stillness here. As I lay on a pool floaty later that morning, 
mindlessly treading through the mineral-laden water, feeling warmth in places on my skin that had never before met the sun, my mind was completely quiet for the first time in years. Maybe ever. I didn't think at all about drinking. In fact, I felt something I hadn't in years. Gratitude. Gratitude that I was clear-headed and could experience all these sensations and people around me in full color. Gratitude that I hadn't felt, felt a lick of shame about the cake I ate the night before, another voice that had been constantly ringing in my head. For the first time since my late teens, I didn't feel the obsessive need to calculate the exact number of calories I had taken in in an effort to immediately expel them through exercise or deprivation. I loved my body for what it was, strong, healthy, beautiful, just like the others I'd seen on this trip. And just as deserving of both nourishment and true pleasure. I wasn't here to drown out the nagging voices. I was here to experience what living life on full volume was really like. As I packed my bags later that day, remaining naked until the last possible second, the fleeting thought of driving home nude crossed my mind. <laughs> I <laughs> had the unshakable feeling that I was a different person on a cellular level. I had left San Diego as a struggling, newly sober woman and was returning, well, a struggling, newly sober woman, <laughs> but with a great under, greater understanding of my own resilience and a renewed outlook on what the future could look like for me. What had started as an act of extremism and rebellion, possibly bordering on a game of, let's see how uncomfortable I can make myself, an attempt to shock my nervous system back into feeling human again, ended as a practice in the ultimate form of vulnerability. I showed myself that I can do hard and new and uncomfortable things. Things like be naked around strangers and go on vacation alone and be a sober person. Now, armed with six years of sobriety and, thank you, and a rotund eight months pregnant, I, <laughs> took the opportunity to visit a local East County nudist resort. The visit was sparked by my interest in a recent change of ownership of the resort and ensuing controversy over the clothing policy. And I was asked by my editor to take a drive out and see if maybe there was a story there. I participated, AKA I was the naked journalist surrounded by people who identified as the naked handyman, the naked woodworker, the <laughs> naked architect, you know, among others. I didn't think it would be a big deal as I was basically a nudist because of that one time six years ago. Uh, but as I joined the others at the pool, I felt the familiar anxiety rise up. It's funny how old habits don't die hard. They really just hibernate for six or 10 or 25 years at a time. After six years of feeling comfortable in my body and pleased with how I looked, I wondered why I chose this specific time to return to a full nudist resort. <laughs> bloated, <laughs> waddling, nipples the size of salami that I was sure would alarm and concern people. <laughs> I had recently taken to issuing a trigger warning to my husband every time I prepared to step out of the bathroom naked. <laughs> um, I was sweating from places I'd never even considered places. <laughs> Not to mention the constant guilt and worry over the fact that I was already teetering against the maximum recommended 25 to 35 pound weight gain in pregnancy. The obsessive calorie counting and exercise threatened to rear its head daily, but I was steadily reminding myself that I was nourishing someone else now. Yeah, old habits die hard. But there I was, sitting cross-legged and naked on a tiny towel, on the ground, tape recorder and notebook spread in front of me, hunched over and jotting notes maniacally as people spoke with me. And that's what fascinated me the most. This stranger, this guest, this swollen interloper, just showed up at their pool and started asking questions and they were opening up to me, surrounding me like I was some kind of bloated Yoda. <laughs> I had a warm, sweet flash of reminiscence from my first experience back in Palm Springs about mutual vulnerability and just witnessing everyone and myself and our complete and unapologetic humanness. They had no idea that I was sober or what I had gone through in the last six years to get to this point. And their grace was also not offered just because I was pregnant. In fact, not one person even mentioned that fact. A welcome reprieve for a pregnant person is to not have their body be the center of discussion for a few hours. 
how big or how small I am, how many weeks I am, whether or not I'm glowing, I am not, <laughs> how giant my boobs have gotten. It was freeing to just be for an afternoon. Here, just like in that pool back in Palm Springs, I could just be and that was enough. I renewed my commitment that day to accept my changing body, pregnant or otherwise, whatever changes lie ahead in my future. I had first made this commitment in the high desert six years ago, but there were clearly subconscious stipulations and conditions to that agreement, primarily assuming my body would stay in one condition and at a very specific weight range for the foreseeable future. <laughs> totally realistic, right? As I drove out of the resort that evening, I felt a renewed trust and acceptance in my own body and my sobriety. My body knew what it was doing. It was nurturing both me and this temporary little guest inside of me. It was intuitively doing the most natural thing it knew to do. No interference, worry, shame, numbing, or denial required. A wave of relief washed over me, and I suddenly just knew that everything would be okay, even when it wasn't. Fake it till you make it. And pretty soon this stowaway will be out in the world with me and I can only hope to instill in her the same sense of empowerment and trust in herself. Let's hear it for Danielle Thomason. Thomason.